All right, guys, welcome to the channel. I've got set up here DVD Profiler. This is a great app on the iPad. You can also get it for Android. It's DVD Profiler, P-R-O-F-I-L-E-R. I'm not a shill for them, but let me tell you something. I love this app. I There's nothing about it I don't like. It keeps track of what I own, what I don't own. So if I'm out buy, to buy something, I have my phone with me, which I always have. I can look up really quickly what I have, what I don't have, and it also has a place for like, like titles I'm I'm wanting, stuff on my wish list, and they can rank them by you know must have it, would like to have it, casual interest, and so on. Anyway, I thought I'd walk you through today my horror collection. Oh, I also found an app that allows me to record the iPad screen without using a camera or something to do it. I can actually record it right from the iPad screen, so that's pretty sweet. And, of course, it also records my voice, which is, you know, depending on if you like my voice, it's, it could be sweet too, I guess, or not. In any event, let me start with uh, Alien Anthology. These will be in, in uh, not sort of alphabetical order, but box sets first, and then uh, Blu-rays, Criterion will be before Blu-rays, then Blu-rays, then finally DVDs. So that, that's what you'll see here, all in alphabetical order once I start. So we start with the Alien Anthology. Uh, I had the I had the uh, UK version and the and then I bought the US version because I like the packaging better, believe it or not. I know a lot of people don't, but I do. And I gave the other version away to uh, my oldest boy, so uh, he he likes the Elliot anthology, and I was happy to give it to him. So here's the back. Uh, you know, looks nice, and you, I'm going to zoom in here on the extras. At least I think I am. So let me try that again. Can I zoom in? It doesn't want to let me zoom in. All right, I'm not going to zoom in on the extras. I lied to you. Um, but it's got uh, commentary uh, on all the movies. Of course, a lot of uh, making of type stuff, isolated scores, uh, in-depth uh, behind-the-scenes featurette, behind-the-scenes featurette, and so on. Yeah, good stuff. That is the uh, Alien Anthology. Next up, uh, the Halloween 10-disc set as opposed to the 15-disc set that uh, a lot of people have. I love this one. I like the cover on this one better than the other one. You know, whatever. Uh, that's my personal taste. Eh, you know, it's like anything else. My taste may not be yours. I do understand, though, that for a true fan or a, you know, a, a big fan of the Halloween franchise, the uh, other set is the better one, no doubt, the 15-disc set. But for me, this was adequate, and I and I do like the cover on this one better. But uh, I didn't buy it for the cover. It fits on my shelf better, and it's got enough extras for me. You can see what they have here. This one's actually pretty easy to read. You've got all the movies. You don't have the extended cut of, I think it was Halloween 5, which I, a lot of people were clamoring for. It's been bootlegged for years and so on. Well, it's not on here, and... It's it's I guess it's sad that it's not on here, but I'm going to be okay with what I've got. And that's what it's all about, right? If I like it, that's good. Of course, all of them are rated R. You can see some of the special effects. I think that's pretty easy to read. And so I'm going to move on to the next one. Well, the Universal Monsters set. This time I do have the British set. Uh, I like the British set. I like the fact that with the, ex the extras that came with it, you've got posters, uh, which I've yet to hang. I've got to do that. They're just small, like, cards almost. I was going to frame them, but uh, I've got a place where I can put them in my room here, so I may do that. Pretty soon I'm not going to have any wall space left between DVDs, Blu-rays, and posters and stuff, but I'm all right with that. You've got all eight original horror classics on this. I don't think there's any difference uh, physically between the two sets as far as the movies are concerned and what what's on them. Uh, it's a great set. It's one of my favorite things I own. I've watched all of these. Uh, they all look great on Blu-ray, by the way. I like the Spanish uh, Dracula quite a bit. I actually like it in some ways better than the the original, except for I like Bela Lugosi. So, good stuff there. Here is the back of it. You're not going to be able to read this nearly as well, but you get an idea of what's here. You see those cards I was talking about. I think both of them have the House of Horror book. So that I believe that's in both. Um, somebody who has it, and it's pretty cool, but it opens up like, you can see how it opens up there, you got some pictures in, I know a lot of people like the UK set, I actually like the U US set better, except for the the cards that you get here, I do like those, I do like the packaging better than the US set, 
But who can complain? You got Dracula, uh, Frankenstein, the Bride of Frankenstein, the Wolfman, the Mummy, Phantom of the Opera, the Invisible Man, and uh, what was that last one? Why can't I read that? You know, the eyes are the first to go. Oh, there's going to be a creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, sorry. My <laughs> it's just a little small to read at the bottom right, as you can see, but by process of elimination. Uh, love this set. Real happy to own it. And that's Universal Monsters, the Essential Collection on Blu-ray. Ah, this is DVD. Uh, so it, it, it DVDs, are, it's box sets first, then Criterion, so on and so forth. Uh, this is a great one. This one, actually, 14 DVD deluxe box set. This one, Aaron Penn kind of pointed me in this direction. Uh, not that he said, hey, Dean of DVD, go out and buy this, but what he he showcased it on his channel, and I really liked it. I'm a huge Boris Karloff fan, uh, not, and not just from uh, the uh, Frankenstein mummy movies, but uh, I, think, I think he's got a really cool voice for horror, uh, much the same way I think Vincent Price has got a cool voice for horror, and I guess that was, we know that. Uh, but the thriller was an anthology series based, uh, it was sort of like a Twilight Zone for horror, if you will, or Outer Limits for horror, so really good stuff. And here's the back. You see you've got 27 new audio commentaries on here with uh, the cast, crew, and TV and horror experts. Hey, how come Aaron Penn's not listed there? Aaron, what happened? How'd you not get on this one? Or uh, Toddy Walnuts, he's a, he's a horror expert. Or, or uh, Sam Faligar 517 you guys are horror experts in my opinion. Uh, why aren't you guys on this? I think you guys can qualify. Anyway, featured stars include, you can see William Shatner's name there, Rip Torn, Richard Keel, that's uh, Jaws of uh, Bond fame, Robert Vaughn, a lot of big names. Tom Poston, he's not necessarily a big name, but I know who he is. He was on, uh, he's on a lot of things. He used to be on the Tell the Truth. Well, that's really dating me. Uh, but he was also on uh, New Newhart. He played the uh, the guy that kept up everything, whose name I can't remember, with the bib overalls on. Leslie Nielsen, of course, Richard Chamberlain. Uh, Werner Klemper, you know who he is? Sure you do. He starred on Hogan's Heroes. He was the uh, Colonel Clink. Marlo Thomas, some of these, I don't know who Natalie Schaefer is. I probably should. Oh, wait, I know who that is. That's uh, that's Mrs. Howell. That's love. That's Lovey. Mary Tyler Moore, Cloris Leachman, Russell Johnson. He's the uh, professor from Gilligan's Island. Edward Platt, Richard Long, who was Nanny the Professor, I think. Elizabeth Montgomery from Bewitched. Ellen Napier. Oh, I know who that is. Oh, that's the skipper. Donna Douglas was, uh, wow, they really, they really, uh, uh, Donna Douglas was uh, Ellie Mae from the Beverly Hillbillies. Marion Ross, of course, uh, Mrs. C from Happy Days, and Ursula Andress from Bond and other things. So really cool stuff here. Uh, really like it. And you can see what Stephen King says. You've had plenty of time to read as I've been babbling. It's the best horror series ever put on TV. I wouldn't argue with that for what I've seen. Gremlins in the Diamond Lux Edition. Love these things. Um, really think these are good looking. Heavy, solid, like the way they close up. Uh, some people complain about how the discs go in. I don't have a problem with that. I, I get them out without a problem, and they're not going to get scratched, so I'm not worried about it. There's the back. Of course, Gremlins. You know, and I'm a big fan of, of Gremlins before they turned into the Gremlins. <laughs> I think it was a really cute movie. Uh, I love the uh, the epic, or you ever want to call it like the 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 uh, kind of legendary. You know, he goes into the shop and here's this magway, and the guy with the long pipe comes out and uh, you know talks to him about this magway, and uh, I just thought it was really cool. That that could have been a movie, even if they didn't turn into gremlins. But of course, turning them into gremlins made it funny and scary and everything else that it was. But uh, good movie. Blade, Wesley Snipes. This is the uh, Canadian Steel Book, which I guess is fairly rare still. It's not that easy to come by. Really sharp looking, though. That that sword, uh, the shine on that sword just really gleams on the Steel Book against that blood red. Really enjoy uh, this quite a bit. And I love the movie Blade. Um, yeah, I just really thought it was a good movie. Love the beginning scene. Like Chris Christopherson in it. I thought... Uh, I thought Stephen Dorff as, as Deacon Frost was excellent. So, see, I do like horror movies. 
just have to be the right kind. I'm a, I'm a sucker for vampire movies every time. Well, I got the Evil Dead. This is the Steel Book. I picked this up. I never saw this movie, believe it or not. I still haven't watched it. But, uh, of course, it stars Bruce Campbell. And it uh, did launch the careers, as it says here, of uh, Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell. And, uh, you know, what a great idea to have a wisecracking ass fighting zombies. I mean, it's just too cool. Uh, great idea. Great movie. From what I've heard, I have seen Army of Darkness, so I kind of know what I'm in for. But I've never seen Evil Dead. Shaun of the Dead. Well, uh, you know, the front says it all, doesn't it? A romantic comedy with zombies. I thought this was a perfect, you know, these they came out with these cartoon-like steelbooks at, uh, I guess, Walmart. That's where I picked this up. And I really think they're sharp-looking. Certain ones are perfect, and this is one of them. I think Shaun of the Dead, based on what it is, and the way they did the artwork out here, is, is was a, one of the perfect ones to have. Here's the back. Uh, yeah, I think you can read this pretty well. As far as what's on here. Yeah, good stuff. Short of the Dead. Well, now we're into the Criterion Collection. I have quite a few what, what would be considered horror movies. I'm not sure this is a horror movie, but I loved this one when I was a kid. And I had to have it once I saw it was available. And it so happened to be available on the Criterion Collection. So I was happy with that. This is The Devil and Daniel Webster, of course. This is a story of uh, a man who makes a deal with the devil to have, be prosperous in his crops and so on. And then the time comes for him to pay the devil his soul. And uh, he gets Daniel Webster to defend him, to uh, try to uh, prove uh, that he should not have to give the uh, soul up to Mr. Scratch, so to speak. I don't know if they ever call him the devil in this. He calls himself a lot of things, but... It's very well done. If you've never seen this movie, it's a, it's very well done. It's in black and white, but it's it's a very nice movie and really like it quite a bit. Um, so I highly recommend it. It's based on Stephen Vincent Benet's short story, The Devil and Daniel Webster, which I also loved. Um, and actually, they uh, I forgot. they On this, uh, they read that short story, or not, not say they, Alec Baldwin reads it. So that's pretty cool. So high definition transfer with restored image and sound, of course. I like it a lot. I don't know if it qualifies as horror, but uh, according to my DVD profiler, it does. So I'll go ahead and say it does. Well, this one certainly does. Uh, Guillermo del Toro's uh, The Devil's Backbone. And here you see the back. Uh, 2001. It's in Spanish. Tons of extras. I think you can read these all right. Uh, one of the most personal films by Guillermo del Toro. It's also among the most frighteningly, frightening and emotionally layered, set during the final week of the Spanish Civil War. It tells the tale of a 12-year-old boy who, after his freedom-fighting father is killed, is sent, to, is sent to a haunted rural orphanage full of terrible secrets. And it combines a lot of things here. As it says, uh, he reminds us that some of the scariest, scariest monsters are, in fact, the human ones. Well, I wouldn't doubt that. Devil's Backbone. The Innocents. I've not watched this yet. I've heard nothing but good praise for this ghost story, horror story. Um, tells the story of a uh, nanny or governess who comes to uh, find out there's something extremely wrong with her uh, new charges. Um, psychosexually intensified adaptation of Henry James' classic, The Turn of the Screw. Co-written by Truman Capote. Yeah. A lot of extras on this too, as you would expect with a Criterion. Haven't watched it yet, but it's a beautiful set. Real happy with that set. Um, and I will watch it soon. I've been in a horror mood lately. Not a horrible mood, just a horror mood. Oh, this is a great movie here. This is uh, Kenito Shindo's Kuroniko. Kuroniko. Uh, a love story, ghost story, I guess you'd say. Uh, it's poetic horror fable set in the village of war-torn feudal Japan. Malevolent spirits are ripping out the throats of itinerant samurai. Yeah. Yeah, he, it's, it's not really a love story, I suppose. But he, he, he struggles with personal demons, this military hero. Yeah. It 
different stuff, though. I actually, I get this confused sometimes with another one that I've got, which I'm probably going to come up here, too, which is more of a love story, but this one's not. A good movie, though. Uh, Rosemary's Baby. Well, a classic Roman Polanski movie with Mia Farrow. Uh, John Cassavetes is in this, the, the famed director. Uh, beautiful cover on this, I think, with the wheelchair, or the wheelchair. The, uh, yeah, the, uh, I can't think of the name of that. Isn't that terrible? The, the um, I would say a cradle, but that's not it either. You know, the mind is the first thing to go. Stroller. Um, you can see some of the extras. Hard to read these, but it, it's a very, uh, you know, it was it was comical in a way. I always thought there was some, some, uh, comical moments in this in this one but it's great uh it's a great movie very well done talks about a, a satanic plot to uh, deliver satan's child out of this earth using a human host and a lot of the a lot of the movie is mia Farrow trying to figure out whether her neighbors are quite as dastardly as she thinks they are and her husband for that matter well what do you say about pasolini's salo uh or salo um it's not as bad as people think. Well, it's not as bad as some people think, but it's bad. This is the 120 days of Sodom. There is some gross shit in this, and I'm not. And that word is not used uh, <laughs> uh, lightly. <laughs> there, there is some rude, rude shit and gross shit in this. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say. It's, it's the uh, filmmaker's transposition of the Marquis de Sade's. Opus of torture and degradation, and the degradation part's the part I have a problem with. <clears throat> the people have called it nauseating, shocking, depraved, pornographic. It's also a masterpiece, according to the Criterion Collection. Uh, I'm not sure about the masterpiece part, but it, but it is interesting. I'm going to say that. Uh, Two-disc version, a lot of extras on this, which you can see there. Uh, that's uh, Salo, or the 121. 120. 120 was enough. Don't give me any more. Days of Sodom by Pierre Poilo Pasolini, who was murdered, by the way. Uh, Pasolini is an interesting story. Someday I'll do a thing on different directors and their life story and, and the films they did and maybe do a series of that. But the one thing about Pasolini that's interesting is he was murdered for, for lots of reasons. Well, who hasn't seen this one? Uh, interesting that it's on the Criterion Collection with a lot of cool extras. I'm really, it's out of print. I'm so glad I have this one. I've certainly seen it in, on DVD before, and, and I think I've seen the Blu-ray. But this transfer is great. Of course, it stars Anthony Hopkins and Jodie Foster and, and Scott Glenn. Uh, really scary movie, if you ask me. I mean, there are parts of this, like like the uh, the other quote said, you know, some of the scariest people are the human beings. And this guy certainly proves that. What a human being can be capable of, given enough madness, uh, interesting stuff. So you see the extras, commentaries, not a ton of them, but some deleted scenes, some storyboards, and so on. Word-for-word -word statements of convicted serial killers. That's interesting. Um, yeah, it's just great to have it on the Criterion Collection. It's one of the early ones. It's like six or so. It's a pretty early spine number. Vampire or Vampire, however you want to pronounce that, uh, by Carl Theodore Dreyer. Uh, silent, more or less, movie. It's got music in it, uh, set the mood and the tone. Slow-paced, atmospheric, long, long, lingering camera shots that kind of draw you in, uh, like the one you're looking at right here. Uh, scary stuff, no doubt. Uh, this one um, does have a, two discs and a large book. It contains the entire screenplay. As well as I think the novel it was based on, I think so. <clears throat> cool stuff though. I like uh, Carl Theodore Dreyer. He also did the Joan of Arc, Passion of Joan of Arc, which is really good. Not on the hard list though. Well, talk about a scary movie. Uh, they remade this movie, The Vanishing. This is a Swedish. Uh, I believe it's Swedish. Pretty sure this is Swedish. Uh, yeah, I know it's English subtitles. Uh, I think it's Swedish. I can't really. It's on the side here. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, see if I can pick this up. 
It's in French and Dutch. So, sorry about that. Woo! Where do we go here? There we go. It's in French and Dutch. Um, it's a really scary movie. It, the premise is, what if years after your girlfriend was mysteriously vanished and you spent the last, I think it was seven or ten years, searching for her because you never knew what happened to her. You you stopped at a, at a gas station type place, convenience store, truck stop, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you were getting, you were just going to get some gas, I think, or you just ran into the store. You ran into the store, and when you came back out of the store, the car that you left her in was empty, and you couldn't find her, and you panicked, and you ran all around trying to find her and asking people if they seen her, and that was it. You never heard another word from her. She just disappeared. And then 10 years later, a man claiming to know the whereabouts and what happened to her tells you you can find out what happened to her, but you're going to have to experience what she experienced in order to find out what happened to her. Uh, truly evil uh, in the in the guise of a man here. So that's that one. That's the end of the Criterion stuff. Now we're moving on to Digibooks and then regular uh, Blu-rays and then finally DVDs. So here's a digital book, The Exorcist. Well, it says the scariest film of all time on the front of it. I won't argue that at all. In my opinion, a really scary movie. Again, we're dealing with things that you you cannot... I mean, how do you fight a presence that uh, is possessing something and you can't kill the something it's in without killing the person? And the whole idea is to get that demon out of the person. How do you do that? Well, only a priest apparently has the knowledge to do that, according to the exorcist, and according to the history of exorcism and so on. Only a Catholic priest allegedly can do this job. I don't know why, but that's what the that's what the that's what the rumors say anyway. It's a well done movie. I love the beginning of it when we see Marin uh, in the Middle East somewhere. Uh, and the demon, and then it, you know, we we cut back to Marin later on as an as an older man apparently. Um, yeah, and uh, Max von Sydow, excellent in this. And here's the back. Scary, it really is scary, very atmospheric, and I love the fact that all the special effects in this were done without special effects. In other words, when stuff was blown around the room, they had a giant fan. They were throwing stuff into the fan to make it to make it uh, do what it did. So that's just kind of cool, I thought. Um, sorry, that keeps doing that. It's my fault. Oh, water. Love that it's in the Digibook. I know other people said there's there's other ones that are better to get. I got this one. The movie's great. The extras on it are great. Um, might I get another version sometime? Sure, but I'm liking this one for now. And I really don't want any of the other Exorcist movies, I don't think. I think just the first one's the only one I'm interested in. I don't own any of the other ones, I don't think. But I like I liked The Exorcist. Well, speaking of scary, I guess this is a horror movie. I don't know what else you'd call it. Um, and if it's a horror movie, it's one of my favorites. I love Jaws. I love everything about it. I love the speech given um, halfway through the movie... Uh, well, I don't know if it's halfway, by Robert Shaw, where he talks about the, the guys in the water and the sharks that came and you know during the war and, and how they came and ate, took them one by one. and uh, Beautiful speech. And who cannot like the whole, you know, the ignorant townspeople who want their, who don't want their tourism to be impacted and are, are, you know, don't want to believe the facts that are right in front of them until such time as they have no choice. What a great movie. And I'm, I'm really happy that I have the digit book. Uh, it was hard to get, I guess. I mean, I got it the first day it came out. And, uh, and by the way, I can't stand people to buy eight copies of something and, and do an eBay thing. If you're one of those people, will you please freaking stop? It's annoying. Uh, do you really need money that bad where you have to, you know, deprive other people of something and then run the prices up? I, I know, I know it's capitalism, blah, blah, blah. But every time I go into my local Best Buy, I say, when are you going to people have a policy where you can only buy one or two of these? Why do you let people come in and buy 10 of something you know you've got in, in short supply? Uh, and I and I, I blame Best Buy as much as I blame anybody else. But anyway, I bought one copy of Jaws and uh, happy to say I did. 
The only thing I've ever bought more than one of, I did buy more than one of the Avengers box set when it dropped in price to like 19 bucks or something. Uh, that's the one with the, that lights up. I bought one and sold uh, one on eBay to, to kind of recoup my cost, but I wouldn't have bought more than that. I'm surprised they even did that. They had like three of them. I took. I bought two. Um, so I guess I'm I'm sort of guilty at least with only one purchase. Uh, well, how is this horror? My wife wanted this. I watched them. I didn't mind them. Uh, but the Twilight Saga. There's New Moon. Where's the back? I'm not sure what order this is in. That's not the first one, obviously. Uh, okay, this is a scary movie. You know, I love Stephen King books turned into movies. I, I've come to the, that conclusion. This says it ranks with The Shining as one of the best Stephen King adaptation, adaptations ever. I would agree with that. Uh, I absolutely love this movie. And this movie is scary as shit. John Cusack, Samuel L. Jackson. Imagine if you were a horror... Uh, well, if you were a ghost uh, investigator, uh, perhaps a somebody who debunks it, and you like to travel around and try to find uh, places that are allegedly haunted and, you know, spend the night there and see what's what. And, well, imagine if you did that and holy shit, it, it really was haunted and holy shit, you may never get out. Well, that's what happens when John Cusack checks into room 1408 in a very old hotel riddled with a lot of problems. Here's the back, some extras, of course, Complete a commentary by the director. Alternate endings. I like the alternate ending, by the way. Deleted scenes with optional commentary. I, I really like this movie a lot. If you haven't seen it, I would recommend it. If you have seen it, then you know what I'm talking about. Well, we're doing some TV stuff, too. Here, here's American Horror Story Asylum. This is the second season, the one that takes place in the... Uh, uh, Convent, I guess you'd say, or Briarcliff home for the criminally insane, um, staffed by nuns and stuff. Um, I've not seen this, so there's not a ton of special features on here, but you, you can always get a good deal when you buy a TV series on DVD or Blu-ray. And the reason I say that is because from a minute, minutes of entertainment, it's always going to be much greater than would a movie movie. You're going to get two, three hours, maybe, if it's a long movie. More than likely, you're going to get between an hour and an hour and a half. And uh, you might get a ton of special features, which is always, of course, why we want to collect, for one reason. But you usually get those with with uh, DVDs and Blu-rays of TV shows, and you get a lot more minutes, typically. So you get a whole. I get this whole season for like $19, which I thought was pretty good on Blu-ray. At FYE, of course. And here's the first season. I have seen that. I love the first season. Dylan McDermott, Connie Britton, liked them both in it. Jessica Lang, of course, is carrying over into some of the other ones, the other uh, seasons. But uh, I thought it was really well done, the first one. And I'm looking forward to watching the second one. Uh, well, Bad Moon Rising, uh, that's what I remember from this movie. I've seen it a number of times, but... That song just plays in my head every time I see it. And, of course, the great Creedence song it went so well with this movie. And here's a movie that's part comedy, part uh, horror fest. And certainly the horror parts are scary and the comedy parts are pretty funny. Uh, David Naughton, of course, stars in this. And uh, the transformation scene uh, was amazing, really. It was a really cool transformation scene. You can see the extras there. Yeah, this is John uh, John Landis directed this, yeah. Who, of course, did Animal House and other things. So good stuff. Baba Duck, Baba Duck, Baba Duck, Duck, Duck. <clears throat> uh, good movie. You know, this is a lot, this says a lot more, but you get this for a great price, by the way. You can get it for like 10 bucks right now. Uh, and I would recommend this, no doubt. It's pretty scary. You know, it's it's a lot about the workings of the mind. If you haven't seen it, uh, you know, your mind can do amazing things if you've got, uh, you know, layers of guilt. 
or layers of grief or layers of whatever. And, uh, you know, it's just, I don't want to say too much about the movie, but other than to say the mind can do amazing things. And if you've watched the movie and you watch the end and you know what I'm talking about, I think. Beneath the Darkness. So well, I haven't seen this yet. Uh, I generally like Dennis Quaid. This didn't get good reviews. Yeah, but uh, it might be good. Not many extras on it or special features, but I, I got it for like four bucks or something. So, it's, you know, one of these days I'll watch it. Blade Trinity. Well, it's probably the worst of the three. Uh, it's the unrated version with the 10, ten minutes more than the, in the standard one. I still like this, even though it's the worst of the three. Yeah. I love this movie. Bram Stoker's Dracula. Uh, I thought I thought it was a really cool Dracula. Of course, Francis Ford Coppola. Uh, I thought. Uh, I thought Gary Oldman did a very, really good job. And I thought sort of Winona Ryder. Uh, loved the scene with the in the cemetery with the werewolf and uh, Nina. It was a pretty hot scene there. And uh, you tell me what's going on in that scene. And then, uh, of course, uh, Lu you know, Lucy was... Do I have those names right? Yeah, I think Lucy is the one he's falling for. Yeah, Lucy's Winona Ryder. Anthony Hopkins is in it. It's just a really good movie. I enjoyed it. It's worth watching. I'll pull that out this Halloween, I'm sure. Delivers from Evil. Um, you know, I got to watch this one again. I had trouble with this one. I know a lot of people like this one. I didn't like it. Or I didn't like it the first time around anyway. I don't know why I didn't care for it. I, I didn't find it all that scary. It was somewhat unsettling, I suppose. Uh, it was somewhat hard to follow. I don't know if I didn't like the camera shots or what happened, but uh, I got to watch it again. I, I may not be, have given it a fair shot. It was disturbing enough to unsettle your sleep for weeks. Well, it, it didn't mind, but um, it does have uh, somebody in it that I really like. And that is da -da -da, Olivia Munn. That's her down in the uh, lower right picture there, Olivia Munn. She's a video game sweetheart and uh, turned into a, uh, she's on the newsroom and she's been in some horror movies, but she's hot. Evil Dead 2, Kiss Your Nerves Goodbye. That's a pretty good show. It's a pretty good movie, isn't it? A lot more extras than in the first Evil Dead. I have seen most of this one. I can't say I've seen all of it, but I've seen most of this one. I don't think I've ever seen it from the beginning, so. Final Destination in 3D includes the 2D version. I, I really like the slipcover on this. I got it for like three bucks or something. Um, and there's the bag. Yeah. Final Destination 5. Ginger Snaps. Thank you, Aaron, for turning me on to this one. Love this one. Uh... It's a diff kind of a different take on a uh, werewolf movie. We're, we're next to a vampire's werewolf is my next favorite thing. Never seen it. Don't think it's going to be good, but someone told me the Paris Hilton death scene is worth watching alone. So I'll probably watch that. Paris Hilton qualifies as a scream queen. Invasion. Nah, I'm not sure it was a horror movie, but it was pretty good. Cole Kidman, Daniel Craig. Um, yeah. I would say this is a pretty good movie. Love this one. Clive Barker's Lord of Illusion. This is from Scream Factory, of course. One of the couple I own from Scream Factory. A lot of good extras. Reversible cover, the whole deal. Lo I love this movie when I first saw it. I still love it, so real happy to have it. Have not watched this Rob Zombie film. I was curious. I got it cheap, like nine bucks or something at, at Best Buy. It was on sale. Uh, don't know a lot about it, but what little I watched on a, tra on a trailer I thought was intriguing at least. Um, it's supposed to be like old school horror. Old school might be 70s though, so I don't know if that's old enough for me, but it looked intriguing. I'm probably going to check it out. Uh, this is, I've only watched the New York Ripper. I've got to watch the other two because I think the other two are going to be more to my liking the more I read about them and learn about them. But uh, I guess I like the cover of the New York Ripper, so. Uh, and it was interesting. I, I couldn't get past the duck. Uh, 
uh, just you had to watch it. Um, but I liked some of it, so I I may uh, I may uh, well like the rest as well. But uh, I did like the I do like the packaging of it, and I do like the, oh, there's no back to that one. Why do they do that to me? Um, you got three movies here though. And I think I'm going to like the other two. And like I said, I liked parts of, of New York Ripper just as a whole. I, I really had trouble with the duck thing. Nightbreed, the director's cut. Uh, this is, you know, the cheap version, not the expensive one. That's okay by me. Uh, this is a pretty good movie. I wouldn't say it's a great movie, but it's a pretty good movie. Certainly the makeup effects were interesting. And the premise is good. And this is Clive Barker, I believe, in it? I believe this is Clive Barker. Seems like I read this too. Yeah, it's a Clive Barker. Uh, I'm sure it's directed by him, but it's definitely a Clive Barker story. Yeah. Priest, haven't watched it, but I have I was intrigued by it. Uh, you know, Priest that goes and hunts vampires. I thought that was kind of cool. I, 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 don't, I don't think it's a good movie, but I, I'm going to guess it'll be entertaining for me. I haven't watched it yet. I've seen parts of it on uh, something, maybe HBO or something. It looked pretty good. Prophecy, Prophecy 2, I picked this up for like six bucks, um, it sounded okay, it's that, uh, it's that, uh, you know, kind of this heavenly prophecy, end of the earth, angel stuff, angel devil stuff, uh, I like that kind of stuff, so I'm probably going to like these movies, I just haven't watched them, they got lousy ratings, and Christopher Walken is always somewhat laughable to me, because his, his delivery is like William Shatner's, you know, it's just so unique that it's, that it's always the same. Haven't seen this yet. Um, I know it's gotten shitty reviews, but I'm hoping that I like it. I don't know. I like Anthony Hopkins. I'm hoping he saves a day. I, I just don't know. Scary movie. Yeah, pretty funny. Um, sorry about that. That's me again. Um, you know, you got some extras on this. It's a pretty funny movie. I, I, I like this. I like the whole idea of spoofing things, so I like that. This was like 10 bucks at, at uh, Target. Five films. Scream, Scream 2, Scream 3, still screaming, screaming the inside story. Uh, you know, what can I say? Five films, ten bucks. Haven't seen any of them yet, but I will. Love The Mist, another Stephen King. I think see I'm a big Stephen King fan. It's been called a masterpiece. Includes the color version, the alternate black and white version. I got this for like four bucks at FYE. Happy to have it. Okay, Supernatural, the series. I've got I've got eight of these. Some on DVD, some on Blu-ray. Uh, I have I've got to catch up. I've got to get the ninth one that's out now. Trick or Treat, loved it. Uh, somebody says the best Halloween film in the last thirty years. I wouldn't argue with that. I loved it. It's kind of like a got multiple stories that all kind of intertwine. I'm going to watch this one again soon. I really really like this one. Big fan of this movie. Just thought it would it it moved well. It tied together well. Nothing I really don't like about it. Walking Dead, first season, second season, third season. Uh, well, I like The Walking Dead, by the way. I'm, I'm behind on it, though. I'm stuck on the second season. I've got to catch up. I'm, I'm obviously a couple seasons behind. Uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, love it, love it, love it. I don't have a big box set of this. I just have the individual ones, but that's okay. Uh, I, I love Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I love Sarah Michelle Gellar. She's a cutie. And I loved her, especially in the early seasons. There's season seven. Now how do we go from how do I go from Buffy the Vampire? I got them all, so how do I go to this? I don't know. But here's the Divamax edition of Dawn of the Dead by George A. Romero. I just showed this the other day. Got some cool extras on it, as you can see on the right hand side here. And uh looks like it's gonna be a good one. Day of the Dead. Also pretty cool. Like the packaging. Tons of extras on this one. We'll be watching these soon. Uh, that's not the cover I have on the 50 horror classics, but I've got 50 kind of cheapo ones. Um, but they're but they're pretty decent. They're watchable. Uh, these are the movies on it. So you can see you can see some of the stars in each one. It's the kind of stuff that was on TV when I was a kid, a lot of them. So I'm looking forward to uh, diving into those some more. Outer Limits, I guess it's horror. I just have the first uh, original series, the first season. It's good stuff. Stephen King's Rose Red. I really enjoy this. I, I just watched the first half of it the other night. Thought it was a really good miniseries. Um, it's uh, two discs. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that quite a bit, actually. Ultraviolet. This is a British uh, vampire hunting thing. It was pretty interesting. I liked it. 
If you've never heard of it, I, I would recommend this. Okay, 80, I don't know where the rest of those Buffy's got. i got to put them in there. Maybe they're not qualified as, as horror. That could be it. This classifies them the way it classifies them. So if, if I can add genres to a film. So maybe something I'm missing that for some reason it's not picking up as horror. I have to go through my collection and double check that. Certainly the rest of the Buffy should qualify. Uh, anyway, Blood of Dracula, you know, if you, it's out of pre criterion. Uh, uh, what can I say about this? Uh, it's, he's got to have virgin blood, and he's having trouble finding a virgin. He gets sick when he doesn't. Uh, it's just a wacky film. Uh, I enjoyed it, but Eyes Without a Face is really nice, really good movie. Surgeon's taking people's faces off to try to reconstruct his, his daughter, I believe it was. Flesh for Frankenstein, you know, take that blood for Dracula, and here you got this movie. It's, uh, same director, Andy Warhol presented it. Uh, you still got Udo Udo Kier in it. I think that's how you pronounce his name. It's it's you know it's it's what it is. Scanners by David Cronenberg. Well, that's an interesting movie, isn't it? Everybody knows the scene where the head blows up. That's it's it's interesting. It's worth a watch. Night Gallery season three. Night Gallery season two. Night Gallery season one. Love Night Gallery. Uh, loved uh, Rod Serling. This is his horror version of the Twilight Zone. And extremely well done. I love the paintings that they used to do and everything else. Love that. The Night Stalker, The Night Strangler is the double feature. Uh, Darren McGavin was great in it. These two movies are excellent. And then they launched the whole TV show. I used to watch it every week. Uh, Dark Shadows DVD Collection 1. No, I don't have all of them. No, I just have, I think, this one and one other. No, this one and two others, I think. Uh, it was a cult phenomenon. I remember running home from school to watch Dark Shadows as a child. Shows you how old I am. Uh, here's Ross's. Yeah. Final Destination 2. Frailty. Hellraiser, 20th anniversary edition. This is pretty cool. That's the back. Got some good extras on Anchor Bay. Stephen King's It. Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. Salem's Lot. Love this movie. One of my scariest movies ever. Uh, one of the scariest vampires there he is ever. Uh, just a real, I thought it was a really scary movie. It's a, it was a miniseries. And that's it, guys. That's the end of it. I hope you enjoyed my horror collection. And until the next time, this is DVD, Dean of DVD, saying so long.